So, well, I think the lawn mowing guy is across the other side of the yard now. It's what happens when you do things at home on a Sunday, I guess. The neighbours do their, their garden. Our, our front and backyard look like a complete jungle, so we don't have to worry about that. But anyway, power generation. Uh, the power generation in our punch is really, like, sort of soft and subtle and it doesn't involve the body. You see a lot of people these days doing Wing Chun where they want to drive the body into the punch and even the shoulder. From our point of view, you do that, you're going to open up uh, a problem. You know, he's going to be tip, tipping his, for, his body a bit and he's making it easier for me, particularly if I've got this kind of footwork. I'll be behind him and once that happens, he's in trouble. So that's one reason why we don't do that sort of thing. We don't want to tip the shoulder. In terms of this, where it engaged somehow and he tips one way, so you're going to, you're going to move your shoulders. He's really, really uh, losing his structure entirely. From here, he's inviting me to hit him. From out here kind of thing, he's inviting me to come around to what people call uh, what, what are they called? Blind, blind sight, that sort of thing. So, uh, we don't do that. Another thing with it is, if you're putting that kind of power into it, you're potentially giving away power that someone can use on you. So, there's a really quite commonly heard saying in Wing Chun, I don't know how to say it in Cantonese, so I won't bother trying, but um, if force comes, I deflect it. If his force retreats, I follow it. And if his force is just gone, I go jump in and attack him. And this is really the essence of sticky hands. So this sort of sort of thing where you practice all of this. There seems to be a big debate about, oh, do you use sticky hands that punch this range? Or is it only when you're in really tired or sticky hands? You don't even use it. Who's going to do that in a fight? I mean, that's thinking far too literally about it all. In fact, if you throw a punch, from here I use sticky hands. As soon as I have contact anywhere, I use my sticky hands, and I guess we can get into later how we view that. But uh, for the purposes of this and the punch, one of the, and how this uh, applies, if I'm in contact and I've got decent sensitivity and I feel him put too much power into here, I'm going to use it on him. And it goes both ways. If I come in this way, or rather he comes in this way, I'll take it off of him. If he tries to pull it back hard, he's inviting me to hit him. If he's coming in at me and wants to yank me that way and I haven't given him something to use, I'm going to come in and use that. That way, you pull that, I'm going to uh, contain it, if that is the word, and use it on him. And that's really uh, the next step to this idea of force comes, deflect, force goes, you follow it in. If his force has just vanished, I jump in and attack him. Or rush him and attack him, or whatever the saying is. A next level of it is if force comes, use it. If he comes in, bang, use it. If he pulls it back, I'll use that. When we punch, we do not want to give anybody anything they can use on us. So our punch is all in the arm. It's, uh, well, for now, it's all in the arm, like that. If I punch and he thinks he's going to pull it, ha! Punch. Do that to me. Ha! You, you're stronger. If I'm in my stance, you just don't give him anything to use. And that then turns into coming in at him. Right? But if you've already got some sort of drive in here, uh, you bend like this, and you'll wreck my back. Don't throw him through the wall. Drive him a bit. If there's a bit of drive in behind Jake's punch and Nick's got good sensitivity, he'll do that to him. So 
that's why we're not going to we're not going to uh, put anything into our punch in that way. So it needs to be contained. We want to strike with our punch. Whether I strike him or, as I did then, his arm, it doesn't matter because that striking power, as I kind of hinted at earlier, is going to feed into literally everything. Everything we're going to do. Straight. Even this can't out, even though it's more deflected. Punch. Bong sell. Will to a degree have this kind of striking power. And you might already be getting a bit of a hint at how we then put the body into the, the power. If you've sort of seen what we were talking about, our Junma, you punches. We put it in with the Junma. We don't drive it through with the body. Because even if I use Junma, actually no. You come and do it because I'll you'll rip my back out of and I won't be able to walk for a week. So you're gonna do the punch with the Junma, but not let him hurt and hurt your foot. So you're in we're in contact somehow. Nick's done a punch to and even though he's got the Junma behind it, Jake still can't. Uh, grab that extra force and throw it because it's both contained in the arm only and it's contained in the body in a finite way with the Junma. If you get hit with that, however, it's uh, if it's coordinated properly and you've done your stance training, your Junma training and the punch training properly, it will break bones. Okay, So that's another point about the power with the punches. Uh, some things somebody might point out about our punches is the fact that we uh, straighten the arm. A lot of people will do this if they do single center line punches like, like this. From our point of view that'll stunt the power completely because you're putting the brakes on and it'll you'll ha necessarily have to have some tension through here. Uh, what we do is fully extend the arm and this is where, like with the low stance, it can get a bit iffy if the person teaching it hasn't done it themselves properly. And uh, you can accidentally teach people to hyperextend their arm. Or, if you're not careful watching them, do a punch. Jake here has very flexible elbows. So me as his teacher, I have to take that into account. And when I'm watching him punch, really make it clear to him and probably the whole class, you fully extend so your arm's straight, you do not hyperextend, because that's where you're going to get hurt elbows. Even then, when you're teaching people to punch, even if they don't have particularly flexible elbows like me, and uh, they only fully extend it, there's still a uh, risk of jarring. If you don't, then go up to people and say, if you feel any jarring, slow it down your joints aren't ready for the power that your muscles can generate yet. It's exactly the same as the EGKMR sinking down. If you feel any discomfort in the knees, even though your muscles can sink down and do it better and longer, it means your joints haven't gotten to a point where they're developed enough to deal with what the muscles are doing. And that's where you get into injury territory. And uh, somebody who's never trained at it properly or has never trained at it long enough to have gone through the various stages of the development of these things uh, could easily get people hurt. And uh, so I guess what I'm getting at is that if you do it properly, like anything, if you do it properly, there's no danger. If you don't do it properly, if you're taught wrong and you do it, you're probably going to get hurt, especially if you train hard like these guys. The harder people train, the more the risk of injury. But uh, if you do it properly, taught by someone who knows what they're doing and has uh, gone through the progression of this stuff and, and importantly, and this is why they have to have done it themselves, has felt the changes their body goes through because it does change your body. Uh, it's, it's fine and you can do it. So that's why we can punch at full power, at full extension of the arm and uh, 
I don't think we've had any jarred elbows in the class in the two years we've been, oh, well, nearly two years we've been running it. Uh, the only time anyone got jarred elbows in my Sifu's class in the years I was there and before, that was, we taught it for a good 30 years. The only time anyone jarred their elbows there is because they didn't listen to what he was telling them and they hurt themselves. And uh, that's always a, a, a danger. Usually teenage boys sort of testosterone and silliness and want to go helpful over doing this. So, so what else about the punches? Well, that's well, it's kind of covered most of it. I'm not going to go into the details of exactly how we do it and that. I mean, I'm not here to teach people the punches. But uh, basically they're absolutely foundational to everything we're going to do with our arms. And that's why we spend quite a lot of time working on them. Because if you can't do your single center line punches, you're not going to be able to do these so-called chain punches, which you probably wouldn't do anyway, unless there was a weird circumstances. But you're certainly not going to be able to do this, <laughs> this sort of stuff. All of that relies on the punches. Good punches, like good Junma, rely on good Yiji Kim and Ma. Pro actually, probably a, a good point to make about the punches is in the developmental aspects of it, is that it sets you up not just for these offensive things like that, but they set you up for things like your lap cell. So you see a lot of people now kind of talking about how lap cell doesn't work, but then if they say lap cell doesn't work, have a look at how they do their Yiji Kimin Ma. If they do this kind of thing here, it's not surprising to me that they then say that lapse out doesn't work. If they don't train their single center line punches, which itself is based on that, it's not going to be a surprise if they can't do their lapse out properly. If they train their um, sun by foot, first part of Sulam Tower, like this, really relaxed and soft through here, it should always be really relaxed and soft up here, but through here is a different story. If they haven't done that, they're not going to have the ability to, to apply the lap cell. They're not going to have the ability to, to actually use the lap cell through here, much less have the speed and so on. Yeah. It's a good reason why you come back when you punch. It's going that way, even though it's kind of got forwards force, it relies on the muscle and the power that you get. This. It relies on the strength you get and the relaxation you get in the long term from this. It relies on the strength and power you get from the sun by fight if you do it the way from the way we think it should be done. If people don't want to lap sell, fine. They can do what they want. But from our point of view, things like this are developmental for everything else that's going to come later on and we should think you're going to do. So yeah, I guess that's about the single sound like bunches.